Hi, Nana. How are you? Thank you for being here. Hi, I'm good. It's so I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time. It's kind of wild, like I was sharing with you right before we hit record, that I saw you in person now two years ago, I think, in 2019. And I was at this event that we have mutual friends. Um, we have mutual friends. And I don't know if I sat next to you or you sat next to me, but I turned over and I was like, you have an essence about <laughs> you. <laughs> I think too. Honestly, we are, we talked about this, but I certainly believe we're cosmically connected. Um, so just start. I'm so glad to be having this conversation with you because there's something. <laughs> something. And I was like, there's something about you. I can't put my finger on it. Uh -huh. And then like, as I was getting to learn about your story, I was like, what the heck? She's so humble. And I would just be walking around with my crown, you know? <laughs> yes, I've certainly lived many lives and I'm sure we'll get into it. <laughs> yeah, and it's so interesting because a lot of my guests aren't as public as you are. So it was interesting, like Googling you and seeing actual information about you. Does that weird you out? I never Google myself. Um, if there's any press out, of me, I never, I never really read about myself at all. It, it's kind of like, it makes me really nervous. Even when I was, I played sports at UCLA and if there was an article written about me, I would just not read it. Um, so I don't know, how's Googling my name these days? What's on there? <laughs> well, I mean that people can Google you and know oh, something about you before I see. you, right? Like, yeah, I, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting way to live that, what happens is actually is that people will Google me and they will see, you know, I'm a former Miss USA. I'm a former really elite athlete, all these things. And then they'll meet me and they'll be like, wow, you're really like, you're way more chill than I, cause I think they think I'm supposed to, I'd be like, present is really regal and like stuck up and all this, but I'm really, I'm super chill. Um, and I, would love to, I would love to get into how you, how you ignite that confidence when you even your energy is very smooth and very calm uh with a very playfulness and in order for you to compete at that level both being in pageants and with your professional sports you have to kind of ignite a fire in you yes um and i guess we can talk about that in a bit but i really want to hear your origin story where did you grow up I mean, I know all these answers already, but still, I want to hear it from you. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I definitely get into the igniting part and how I drive my days because I just recently awakened. And so I'm more intentional about it. Mm -hmm. Where in my 20s, when I was doing all my sports and pageants, it was kind of just running through me. And I, I had no idea about the universe and the astrology and herbs and all the things. So uh, we'll get into that. But um, I was actually born in South Africa. My mom is South African, my dad is American. And we left when I was four. And I grew up in the DC area and went to Sybil Friends, which is pretty much where all the president's kids go, mm -hmm. like Chelsea Clinton and the Obama daughters, the Bidens, Roosevelt's, Nixon's, Al Gore's son was in my sister's grade. So it was a very DC um, upbringing. And then I went on to Duke. My father was the first African-American to go to the med medical school. So he was, he was like, you must fulfill my legacy. <laughs> so I, I tried it and I, I didn't so much like the experience. It very much reminded me of um, it was like just a small private school. And I I wanted to just expand my life experience. And so I transferred to UCLA and was on the volleyball team there. And I um, was this East Coast girl, uh, came onto this team with California girls who'd been playing for their entire lives. And I even had to kind of relearn the sport. Uh, because my footwork was backwards. I don't even know how I ended up at UCLA. At the time, it was one of the best volleyball schools in the nation. But I worked super hard and became an All-American uh, twice by my senior year. I went on to play professionally and trained for the Olympics too. Oh and then I retired. <laughs> um, so sports is a really, really big part of my um, foundation of, of, my, of my 20s. Um, and then I returned to school and I entered into a program at USC called post-baccalaureate and it's post-graduate 
pre-medical science studies. So I was preparing to go to medical school. Again, my father's a doctor, so he really wanted me to become that. Um, and as I was studying, I got bored and missed having something else to aspire to. I was so used to being a student and an athlete, and all of a sudden I was just student. So one of my friends recommended I compete for Miss Malibu, and I did. And I ended up winning that pageant, which led me on to Miss California. And I was hooked. Um, I competed for six or seven years, never won California. And then I was done my studies and moved back to Maryland and competed one last time for Maryland because you age out at 26. You're like, you're like, you're too old. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so it was my last try and I competed at Maryland and won and went on to Miss USA and in a roundabout way became Miss USA, which led me to New York City. Mm -hmm. um, when you win, you, you they move, the organization moves you to New York. You live a block away from Trump Tower. And at the time, the organization was owned by Trump. Mm -hmm. um, and you did all these fabulous things around the city and the world. You traveled, like I went to the Super Bowl. I went to Sundance. I met a lot of people. Um, and then I ended up staying in the city uh, mm -hmm. after that. And what, what helped? What else happened? And then I, I realized I wanted to work in fashion magazines because there was a lot of power in media. Mm -hmm. um, and so I applied to jobs, no one would hire me. And so I interned at the age of 30. Wow. <laughs> and um, I interned for about almost a year and then got hired at Harper's Bazaar and was right hand to the editor in chief of Harper's Bazaar. So my life was like the devil wears Prada. If you've ever seen that movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know you've worked in, corporate America where, you know, it's like go to the office every day, yeah. uh, super stressed, you're there till night and that's your, your soul over, it's your soul <laughs> over and over and over again. Um, and then I, I kind of hit a ceiling. Um, there was no growth there. And I looked around uh, what were the most, I don't know, exponential industries. And at the time, everyone was talking about this thing called Bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, and blockchain. And so I applied for a job at uh, Consensus, which is a blockchain accelerator founded by one of the guys who started Ethereum. And I got the job and that's where I currently work. Um, and on the side, I founded a, a flower wine company. I make wine out of flowers. <laughs> Well, you're going to have to teach me about this Bitcoin thing because it's, <laughs> it's what people are talking about and I really believe it's the future. So yeah. uh, you're going to have to teach me. But one thing that I wanted to ask when you were talking about your, you know, entry into pageantry is what was it about it that you liked? Because it seems very, and I don't know, I don't follow the pageants. I don't know that world at all. Yeah. So this is just my stereotypical perspective, but it seems like it's very much based on looks, first yeah. of all, and, and um, maybe in a patriarchal way as well, just knowing um, DT, Donald yeah. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to speak his name. I'm but what was it about it that you liked? Yeah, um, I'm a firm believer that um, there's many different forms of currency. There's, of course, money, there's mm -hmm. monetary, currency and that's the most prevalent and most aware we are of currency. But there's also a currency, especially within women. Um, we have beauty and we have sex and those aspects you can use to transfer goods, which is what currency is. And so yes, pageants may be just, oh my gosh, she's just wearing an evening gown and putting on tons of makeup, but it is a form of power. And to compete and prepare to compete at the level that um, we did uh, at the time, the Miss Universe organization was in the telecast of Miss USA, Miss Universe, and Miss Teen USA was one of the most watched television events in the world, mm -hmm. um, besides the Olympics and the World Cup. Um, and so, in preparation for that, and it's live TV, you have to be the best version of yourself. And yes. Um, on the outside, it is just, wow, her dress is really pretty and she's great lipstick, I don't know. But in order to present yourself to an entire nation or world, you literally have to spark something within yourself. And so I think I was drawn to pageants because of 
the preparation and that you have to peel away these insecurities mm -hmm. um, to present and become the best version of yourself. And preparation is really, really intense, or at least it was for me. Um, I spent, you know, months and months of, you know, working out, uh, tuning in to the news, forming opinion and, you know, just learning to present myself as a woman. Before that, I was a girl. I was very much a girl. And so it kind of prepared me for womanhood and um, how to present myself to the public. Yeah, because you have to ignite some kind of self-confidence. And that's something you can't fake. No. That's something that everyone can see. And you're standing there on the stage and you really have yeah. to exude out. Yeah. And, and of course, everyone on stage is beautiful. Right, mm -hmm. so that's the common denominator. There is something else that mm -hmm. the top five women have right. that, you know, in preparation, as I said, it, it's like a lot of inner work to peel away, mm -hmm. you know, voices in your head that I'm too bad, I'm too this. Because mm -hmm. if you're having those conversations in your head, they're gonna show on stage, you're gonna be like super nervous. I do believe there is some sort of aura we present. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the preparation for that was very much um, an inward journey as well. That's why I said you had an essence. And now that I'm hearing your story, it's a magnetism. magnetism. As you said, there's so many beautiful people where, you know, we can agree. Everybody can agree. These people are beautiful. Yes. These women are beautiful. But you have a certain level of magnetism in your aura that is different than the other women. So... For you personally, what did you have to do to get over your insecurities? Because also people are looking at your body and like, yeah, <laughs> you're a teeny, right? Yeah, I've, I've millions of people. Uh, but to your point, I believe we all have a magnetism and we all have an aura. And it, it's, it's the work you put in to, you know, dig your way into the core and find it and bring it out. Um, as I said, my, my awakening to spiritual work didn't happen till my, I think I was like 32 or 33. And so at the time preparing for Miss USA, I didn't know the work that I was doing was, you know, stuff we read about in like self-help books. <laughs> but um, my days were very regimented. Um, I would eat well. I think eating has a lot to do with uh, you know, unlocking that inner magnetism and energy and flow. Um, so my, my diet was super clean. Um, I was working out. I wasn't meditating at the time, which is super interesting, but I was doing forms of visualization. Um, very much. I would, you know, write down like, I am Miss USA. Mm -hmm. And before I would sleep, I would like visualize myself being crowned and, um, you know, I was doing some of the work that we now, at least that I now explicitly know as this is how you manifest, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but I didn't know the label for it. So there were, there was like a physical, like, uh, let me go, you know, work out two times a day, but there was also this like inner mental, like, um, manifest manifestation work that I was doing. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see where Aries is in your chart. Do you Ooh. have Aries? I don't know, but do you I, read parts? Because I'm going to send you mine. Yeah, I'm going to read that part. Because I feel a lot of Aries energy within you. Uh, when you said you went to, you know, a, your DC high school, which I'm assuming was predominantly white and very privileged. And then you went to UCLA where you almost had to like learn again um, mm -hmm. the sport of volleyball where, you know, everyone there is probably playing volleyball when they're like, crawling yeah. and then you and then you got into pageantry and if I if I read it correctly you're like the oldest yeah I was the the yes crazy right <laughs> and then you're one of the only black women who own a wine company now yeah. so I feel like there's some kind of pioneering energy about you where you're just like fuck that like I don't care what kind of labels people put me on or in or boxes like I'm just gonna do it where does that come from <laughs> well, very intuitive of you and you know in my age now I look back on my life I was like how and why did I do that and like I had no point I've been in rooms that I'm not supposed to be in I these competitions like I had no right to be like writing to UCLA being like hey I want to play on your team I was I grew up on the east coast in Maryland when volleyball was not a thing here 
So there is, yes, yeah, something in me that uh, continuously aspires to these things greater than myself. Um, I think it has very much to do with my father. If behavior is genetically passed down, mm -hmm. um, this is an example of it. Um, in his life, he has done amazing overarching things. For example, I, I explained he was one of the first, you know, he was the first African American to go to Duke Medical School mm -hmm. uh, during the civil rights movement. And he has crazy stories about being, you know, during that time. Um, also when he was 28, uh, he was watching TV with his friend and his friend was like, I bet you can't run as fast as those guys on TV. My dad was like, I think I can, you know, I think I can. <laughs> And so he starts running around. He was a doctor at the time on breaks. He'd go, you know, run the stairs. Like he didn't know what he was doing. He's just like mm -hmm. training. And he keeps entering track meets and he keeps winning. He ends up breaking the record for the hundred yards and he'll have it for the hundred, because it's the hundred meters now. Right. And he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in 71. Oh and throughout his, life, <laughs> throughout his life, he, he did all these, these seemingly crazy things mm -hmm. that, you know, people prepare all their life for. Um, but that's not to say that um, there's no hard work behind it. Um, I think the, the secret sauce is though that, um, yes, we, my, my family and I, we have this drive within us, but so do a lot of people. Um, I think that there's just a perseverance um, because whenever you're striving to something really big, you're gonna get a whole can we curse on this? We get a shit ton yeah. of no's. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there has to be something in you that picks yourself up day after day. Like, okay, they said no, but there has to be another way. Like I'm not taking no for an answer. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I think, I think there's like a, there's a perseverance that runs through me, but also I'm a dreamer. So I aspire mm -hmm. to these like ridiculous things. And now it's mm -hmm. the wine industry. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That quality is so attractive to me because I grew up with you know, a family that's very traditional immigrant mentality, but in a very non-expansive way like your father, but everyone has to be a lawyer or doctor and, you know, their goal is to get married and have kids. And I just was not born that way. I don't know where I came from, but I just have such an expansive mind as well, where I'm like, mm -hmm. anything that you dream up or you envision is possible. Sure. Yes, there's work. Yes, there are limits, but why not? Like, why not just try it? You know, yeah. I've never gotten to the point where I would just sign up for a pageant. But <laughs> You're doing it. All the things that you do though, it's what, that's what runs through you. Yes. It was, you know, pageants. Um, but I, oh, this isn't promise. Like what a gift. I literally wake up every morning. Like what a gift it is that I am on earth right now. And like, there's birds singing outside of my window so much like in my day to day, I am just, so amazed and in bliss that I can't not do really big things with this opportunity that is life. Like I'm in a, I'm in a state of being where I'm like, what is this? <laughs> this is crazy. Like I very much believe we live in a video game and what a gift it is that we're alive. So I take advantage of it. <laughs> yes, I see that. Um, so then you were working for a blockchain company which you're doing now as well and then you said during that time you had your spiritual awakening yes what was the impetus or you know event that happened sure there always is an event it always is um, always. <laughs> it always it always is usually very dark yes um, and to a place where you you are you are faced with mortality. Um, so very much that happened to me. I w it was November of 2017. Um, my horoscope told me to go see the doctor and I did. And um, you know, we did the whole like physical tests and all this and everything was great. Uh, a week later, I went back. She was like, wow, you're in great health, except one thing. There's a marker here that shows your blood sugar is extremely high. And if you eat like one more donut, you're going to have prediabetes. And at the time I was 32, I think, yeah, I think I was 32 or 33. And like how at my age uh, and as a former athlete and someone who's active, could I be on the precipice of a chronic disease that I didn't even really know much about. Um, but you know, these symptoms and, you know, what was expressing was a sign that not only was there something off physically, that my 
alignment was off as well. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of rattled me. I was like, oh my gosh, like what, what is, what is this? Uh, and so I started asking questions of like, okay, if I have, if I'm going to have this, how do I fix it? Uh, what am I supposed to be eating? Well, how am I supposed to be working out? Oh, and also what is this thing? Meditation, everyone keeps doing it. And okay, I'm doing yoga, but I don't really know the origins of it. So all these questions, um, at the end of the year 2017 were bubbling up in my head and I love writing. That's my intelligence. That's how I, you know, process. It's like, I'm going to do a year's writing into wellness and these questions. Um, because I was in this beginner position of wellness and you, your channel and all your stuff is so amazing because it's so approachable. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like you're, you, you just tell very good, you give really good instruction as to how to walk the path. So I thank you. You're, like, you're very, very, very inspiring. Um, and just the same, I'm trying to be like you, uh, I would write, <laughs> uh, you know, weekly columns as to, you know, what is this? Uh, you know, from yoga is this, or this is how you meditate, or this is fasting. And I back it with science and also, you know, the woo woo things. So it was a mix of, you know, fact and folklore. And, you know, by six months in, um, woo woo stuff started happening, like stuff you can't explain. I would sit in ceremony, I think it was July of 2018. And uh, it was a sound meditation. And for example, I saw the thing called God, whatever you want to call it, the universe, I saw it, the light <laughs> in the ceremony. And um, a weekend before that, I sat in a Tantra weekend in Woodstock with women. And all of a sudden, like my heart burst open and I was like, oh my gosh, this is what it means to be a woman. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I learned all these like, you know, the science behind eating, but also, you know, the, like the stuff we can't explain so that year was really pivotal and it started from this this diagnosis that i was about to get really really sick mm. and by the way i changed my blood chemistry food is really important and yes as i said it's the basis of spirituality for me yeah. um, but i'm in a good place now <laughs> that's so good to hear and i don't know why it takes that always like some kind of health crisis Mine was a breakup, so, um, so interesting. Always something big that makes us go in inward and like ask these questions. And when people ask me about what spirituality is, all I say is questions. It's just being yeah. curious. Yeah. And also, it's an inside job. You have to be curious about yourself and your role in this world there's really nothing yeah. glitzy or glamorous about it it's just sitting with yourself and writing exactly and it's lifelong like i see you still learning and i'm still learning and we'll be doing this till we're 80 and it's great and i'm yeah. having so much fun <laughs> totally it's so much fun and it's so much fun feeling validated by your experiences as well like you're not crazy no yeah exactly it's and i think it's just so wonderful to have been born a woman as well because uh, i think there's just an inherent connection to whatever the other side is in that whether you choose to or not like the potential to have a, a child or a soul run through you i think gives us great connection to all of this work um so what a blessing too that it is that we are women <laughs> well did you know that black women have the eve gene they're the only people on this planet with the Eve gene. So every person has come from a black woman. Have you heard of that? I just got goosebumps, which means that is truth. And that is beautiful. No, thank you for sharing that perspective. That's beautiful. I mean, there's a reason why people fear black women. There's a reason why they are the ones who are the most depressed because true, they yeah. literally That's created this planet. That's so interesting. Black women. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Wow. Oh gosh, I thought every Black woman knew. I did not. Thank you for educating. This is beautiful. I will contemplate this. Wow, it's very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I try to share all of these random facts that I learned uh, because yes. I think it is, it is so important to, you know, I grew up with a level of privilege. And with that, you know, I want to amplify people and help people remember their true power. And there is a reason why what we're going through now is why we're going through it now is because people are waking up and yes. remembering their ancestry. Yes. That, yes. Um, ooh, I feel like we keep getting interrupted energetically because there's so much energy passing through. <laughs> it's wonderful. Do you feel that? <laughs> yes, I 
Kelly, I'm getting goosebumps. Your <laughs> words are moving me. <laughs> it's oh, amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I was just thinking about that as you were talking because we are ever evolving and the truth comes out basically and I, I'm so glad that you are feeling better and that you are bringing your gifts to this world because again when I met you you were still working in blockchain and I don't even remember what the meeting was about even <laughs> I just remember being very in awe of the different women in there and what they were doing with their lives because that was also at the beginning of my spiritual journey and just realizing that there are people doing different things besides oh, wonderful. and you must keep going you're I think your intelligence you're a really good orator I could listen to your Instagram lives and IGTVs all day like I do I just like fold my laundry and listen to your like moons Thank you. You know? <laughs> so you are blessed and please continue doing your work it's very very inspiring thank you I just have so many random like connections my mind is like a beautiful mind it's like all these webs and tangents of how I see the connections of everything. And I'm just so grateful that, um, that it resonates with you, which I was sharing before we recorded every time I talk about Nana and I think about her, she's the first, she's the first person that shows up on my feed. And, she, and even last year in the beginning of 2020, before the panorama, I wanted to do a liver cleanse because that's what spirit told me I should do because I was a heavy, heavy drinker. Mm -hmm. And I literally look up your Instagram that said you had just done it. Uh -huh. you sent me the PDF and I was reading. I was like, this is like yes. really rough. <laughs> I'm going to be doing what? <laughs> I know. Speaking of, I should do another one of those. But yeah, we but definitely felt, did a liver cleanse. <laughs> it felt so good. I was yeah. so clear. And then the the day that I finished, we were in lockdown. Oh wow! Was yeah. that just last year? Just last year. That was crazy. Yeah. So that cleanse probably prepared you for the year to like yes. take on the air. Because the liver has like you know it's more than just a detox right. for us. It it has you know other powerful significance, but wow, it must have prepared you for quarantine. It, it was meant to be, and that is why I say, I really believe in the power of your energy and like what we're all transmitting through because I was meant to see that, I was meant to do that yeah. to be clear uh, last year. And I haven't had alcohol since December, 2019. Amazing. Which is again, Amazing. so ironic and synchronistic not ironic synchronistic i have to realize that this is just magic yeah. that you reached out to me with your brand yes kale kale you pronounce it kale it's an allusion to the vegetable that once stood for wellness like if you're eating a kale salad <laughs> like you're really healthy um <laughs> so I, yeah i just stole the name <laughs> so with a c c-a-l-e i love that um, so then how did you come up with this idea? Yeah, so I actually, I had the, the original idea was to make a non-alcoholic wine, which is super hard to do, mm -hmm. um, but it has evolved into a low alcoholic wine. Um, and the way we've created it, it's also low in sugar, it's low in calories and it's low in sulfites. But the origin stories of this were very much connected to that year I spoke of in 2018 when I started asking all the questions and I started doing the writing. At the end of that year, I treated myself to a trip to Costa Rica and I stayed on a permaculture farm called Punta Mona. Oh, I know that place. Yeah, have you been? Well, I met the founders at Envision. Which yeah, founded that's Envision. right. Yeah, I went, I, went on a, I went on a jungle plant walk with one of the founders. Okay, you, you, this is a sign you have to go to this land. It is just, another, it's just straight magic. There are no roads that lead to Punta Mona. You either come in by, by boat or you hike in through the jungle, mm -hmm. first of all. So it's a, it's a very magical, amazing place on earth. Uh, founder Stephen Brooks. And I, I got there and everything around you has a story. All the plants are, you know, carefully planted and the jungle is like swirling around you. And 
the, the founder would take us on walks, like you just explained, and be like, oh, if you brew this, it will help your headaches. This one is an aphrodisiac, like smash it up and put it on salad. This one will like help you sleep if you can't, like, I don't know, all these things. And I started to realize, wow, like plants are really powerful. Like mm -hmm. something like, a, like lighting a match was like, there's something about plants in me. And what, it, what this whole experience of Kuntamona was signaling was that there's a bit of an herbalist in me in that the study of herbalism is the knowledge of how plants and herbs heal. Mm -hmm. And that I believe when you start asking these questions in wellness, like you and I did at our awakening, um, you begin to realize kind of your purpose. Like some people express and become yoga teachers. Some people do Reiki, some people do astrology. Um, and for me, it was herbalism. And that's how I connect very much to the thing that's bigger than us. Um, is playing with botanicals, uh, mm -hmm. making tinctures, making infusion, make, making teas, making medicine. This was our first medicine. Like when our great grandmothers, mm -hmm. when someone in the village got sick, they'd walk into the forest and find some leaves and, you know, put it on your burn or like make it into a tea. And that was our medicine. And even now, a lot of pharmaceutical drugs are based off of plants. They're derivatives uh, or like replications of chemical structures that are found in plants. And so I, I fell in love with it. Um, as I said, my dad is a doctor. So I think that, you know, in my family, there is this healing mm -hmm. gene. Um, but for me, it was medical school. It was becoming or studying to become an herbalist. Mm -hmm. And while I was studying, um, so I came back from Costa Rica and I started studying it and I would apprentice with uh, herbalists around the city and in the Catskills. And as I was studying, I came across this field called herbal wine that, um, Back in ancient times, in ancient Egypt, Greece, Romans did this too, ancient Chinese culture, um, we would ferment herbs and botanicals into wine, mm -hmm. that we weren't just drinking grapes, um, that um, all of these medicinal herbs and mushrooms and botanicals and plants can be made into wine. And that we kind of lost it um, through, especially the German Purity Act, which only allowed hops mm -hmm. into fermentation. And hops are a plant, they're actually a sedative. That's why when you drink a really hoppy beer, you may get a little sleepy. Mm -hmm. um, but all of these plants and herbs are really fun. They have different functional benefits. And as I said, you can make them into wine. And so I, I came back to my mother's kitchen. I was like, mom, I need some space. My New York apartment's too small. I'm gonna start making herbal wine. <laughs> <laughs> Summer of 2019, I started you know, experimenting in her kitchen, making lemon balm wine or shisandra berry or using reishi mushrooms and making these beautiful beers and herbs. And uh, you know, the way they taste, it's, it's, not, like, it's not like grape wine wine. Um, herbs and botanicals expressed differently, but they're beautiful. The way they express is beautiful, and I was like, I need to bring this to to life to market. Um, it's very much a cousin of kombucha, in that kombucha too uses different teas and and herbs and botanicals um, to create that drink. But this is a little bit more elevated. Um, our wines are only 4.5 percent alcohol. We produce out of Napa. Um, our first wine is hibiscus wine. And this fall, we're product developing a marigold flower wine. And hopefully next year, we'll do something with roses, uh, lavender, um, lemon balm, nettles, ginseng, just on and on making pretty much, you know, uh, functional medicinal wines uh, for the world, which I'm super excited to introduce. I'm so excited to taste it. I was like, where can I get them? <laughs> so we're currently selling online. Uh, at drinkkale.com. Again, kale is C-A-L-E. Mm -hmm. um, we're direct to consumer. So there's this, there's this wanting and um, inherent like, like passion in me to create herbal wine. And then there's like the, the reality of this, that the alcohol industry is so regulated mm -hmm. <laughs> that as much as I want to just like push this out into the world, um, there's laws vestigial from prohibition that make uh, creating an alcohol brand very very hard mm -hmm. um but i as i said I, i'm very much one who doesn't take no for an answer so it's been a couple of years of product development um raising money um you know getting product right then sending it to napa and then you know making it 
and putting it, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> and in any industry, when you start a startup, it's a lot, but alcohol, I even think it's probably even more regulated than cannabis at this point. Um, but it's, it's, it's my joy, it's my life. And whenever I get frustrated with the business side, I just like go back to my mother's kitchen and play with herbs and I'm reconnected to you know, why I wanna do this. <laughs> I love it. And you know, when I saw what was happening in 2020, because everyone was inside mm -hmm. and I felt like a lot of people started connecting back to plants. Like I've never seen so many people have plant babies. Yeah. I finally have plants for the first time in my life. And also we have to go foraging because yes. I've been going foraging every day. It's my mm -hmm. season is like super like abundant right now. And I was like, who am I? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I love that. It's just like, yeah, once you start to learn about different plants and botanicals, you walk outside and what you thought was a weed, you're like, oh my gosh, that's yes. a sport. And that helps me with my this and this. Yes. Lemon balm and dandelions are medicine too. Like every plant, it's, it's like has a purpose exactly. and a function. And you, you begin to see like the tapestries around. You're like, ah, oh, that's, yeah. that's plant medicine right there. <laughs> Which is why we live in an abundant earth. Yeah. Like mother earth is so abundant when you can just stop and look at all the plants around you. Exactly. And yeah. I yell at my parents because they hire a weed yeah. person and they mow their lawn every day. And I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's medicine <laughs> they're like it's so ugly and I'm like who cares no it's it's only ugly if you don't know this even like beyond the medicine of these plants there's a lot of folklore behind them mm -hmm. like if you carry around a satchel of this you, your love will appear there's like a lot of folklore that's really fun too yeah. so to have them in your yard sprinkled there's like there's I don't know there's signs from the universe of what you should be learning or what what's around you and what's supportive. Totally. Mm -hmm. that's like being a green green witch. You might yeah. be a green witch. Yes. <laughs> I, I definitely think because right now mugwort season is at its peak in New York. Yeah. I, oh really gosh, I saw your Instagram. Yes. You we're in a field of them yes. and they're really super tall. Yes, <laughs> because. We're in cancer season right now, which is all about your intuition and being in the consciousness of water. And yeah. I think it helps with your dreams. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and like tapping into another level of consciousness because each plant also has uh, a, an astrology and an and a element. Mm -hmm. So I really believe that these plants are allies yeah. for us to move through certain seasons. Correct. Yeah, it's just another language of the universe. And speaking of dreams, right when I started, you know, tapping into, you know, like all the spiritual work, so much started to unlock. First of all, like I started realizing, oh, there's a connection between me and plants. But also I started lucid dreaming. I don't know if you do that. Mm -hmm. Do you lucid? Yes. Yeah, it's fascinating. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> whole nother podcast. And I know that I'm dreaming and I'll tell myself in my dream, yep. to remind myself to call somebody in the morning and then they'll call me. That is insane. Yeah, it's insane. That is, like, there's so much more to life and it's so beautiful. <laughs> My friend used to use lucid dreams, her, her father passed. And so she used to use, use lucid dreams, which is you wake up in your dream and it's very much like here, like everything is like, you can talk to people, you can walk around, you can eat food, you can do whatever you want. Um, but she would call on her father and she would ask him questions like anything she's having trouble with in real life. And he would give her answers and it, they would work in real life. She'd get advice from him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's to the point, like I'm, I'm, like, I'm so connected to the dream world, especially as you said, during certain seasons uh, or certain positions of the moon, especially mm -hmm. around new moons, I lucid a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I sometimes even find it, I'll have to be like, oh my God, am I awake right now? Or is this a dream? Or like a memory, I'll be like, was that a dream? Or was I, yes. <laughs> like, I'm very much integrated into, you know, the dream world. <laughs> that is so, oh, we could talk about this we oh, a whole other <laughs> podcast about lucid dreaming and then yes. next one about Bitcoin. And then I know. <laughs> there's so many topics. Yeah. Um, so what are some challenges that you've been, I mean, you mentioned that you've been going through a lot of the business side of your um, business entanglements and red tape around your business. Yeah. But um, what are some other challenges, maybe more psychologically, that you've had to move through? And what do you, what are your practices for getting through those times? 
And the second question is the follow up. Oh my gosh. The second, oh, the second question is the follow up to what we were alluding to in the beginning about how do you get your energy into that yeah. point of like, hi. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you have such good questions. Um, I'll start with the second one. I have very much a morning ritual um, that definitely fortifies me for my day. And it changes seasonally or like week by week, but very much meditation is a part of it. I move my body. I like to go on runs or do some sort of hit workout so that I'm waking, physically waking up my body, like activating circulation. And then I'll down a huge glass of warm water and that's to start moving. Sometimes I'll add lemon and that's to start, you know, clearing the liver and starting to move things in, uh, in internally. And then um, I'll sit to meditation and I activate my meditations with breath work. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll use yoni eggs, I'll light sage or Palo Santo um, in order to clear the room, but also to like like a Pavlovian dog, like, oh, it's time for meditation. You know, like that smell reminds me like, okay, it is time to like turn in. Um, and I'll meditate for like half an hour to an hour. Um, and very much my mornings are sensual. And I've written about this um, recently that our creative energy is very much stored in sexual energy in that it, if sex creates humans, it can create really great ideas at work. Mm -hmm. uh, it can make you really, really productive. And so I harness that, I breathe it up with breath work, um, and then I'm ready to take out my day. Um, but no, I do not wake up like a bundle of roses. <laughs> it takes <laughs> a in the morning um, to, you know, like turn on. I must align to the thing that's bigger than us, and then I'm ready to take on my day. And when I don't do that, when I'm like, oh, I'm totally fine. I'm going to go take my meetings now. My day becomes so, so hectic. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? But it's because I, I, did, I failed to connect in the morning. So morning rituals are super important to me. To the point where I, I'm starting to think about doing an evening ritual. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have any tips on evening rituals, I've never really tapped into that. But mm -hmm. I suspect if you turn yourself inward at night, you'll have better sleep, which will make you have a better morning and the whole cycle. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to um, getting past, you know, hardships, to, uh, building a company, um, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, uh, putting something out into the world, whether it's a business or a blog or a podcast or whatever it is that you're wanting to step out with, uh, it's, it takes a very much it's an exercise in personal development in that I've experienced tons of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. That is, what am I doing here? Like, how dare I start making wine? Like, I didn't study this in college. Like, everyone's going to think I'm crazy. Um, if anything, my, my self-talk is, uh, it makes something in my childhood um, made me think of myself lesser than I am. So my work is you know, continuing to bolster and give myself confidence. Um, and what helps me is again, in my morning rituals, I'll listen to positive affirmations first thing when I wake up. And it's in order to like, not let my brain be like, you're not good at this. You're not good enough. You suck. Mm -hmm. um, so if anything, you know, the only drawbacks in business usually are just to do with yourself. Um, and if you overcome, you know, self-deprecating talk or whatever it is that your work is, um, you'll continue to produce and put things out in the world. Mm -hmm. So if, for anyone looking to start a startup, know that it's like, <laughs> get a therapist or like, <laughs> <laughs> very psychological as it is, you know, as a physical bringing about of an idea. <laughs> it's so, it's so spiritual and it's shadow work and a day-to-day -day yes. basis. It really is. Your own business. Yeah. It's so triggering sometimes because you have to trust in your abilities and the universe. And yeah. also I constantly have to ask myself, why am I doing this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this because you want money? Is this because you want yeah. some level of fame? Is yeah. it because you need validation? And sometimes those answers are yes. And then you have to ask yourself, well, like, what is that all about? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think, or I'll speak for myself. I don't think I could have built this company in my twenties or before um, knowing what I know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very much spiritual work. 
totally. <laughs> and it's funny that you said that because sure. well, you were giving me a compliment about my oration skills, but every time I put something out there, I I'm like, this sounds so crazy. <laughs> no, it does not <laughs> keep going. I like eat it up. It's like it fortifies me. You're giving us fuel and food. Yes, <gasps> more. <laughs> well, it's just because I think that I wasn't doing this exactly what you were saying about the imposter syndrome. You know, I didn't wake up one day in, in my early teens or twenties. I'm a spiritual mystic person, you yeah. know, it was much later in my thirties. And to a certain extent, I felt like this is a huge shift and people are going to be like, what the heck happened? I, you know, there's, there's different learnings. You can learn something in a book and in school, but there's also like an intuition that runs through us and you're literally just expressing this river that you can't put words to, but it's, it's knowledge that's yeah. coming from somewhere. Like mm -hmm. you're very wise and it's coming from somewhere and the way you speak, I can tell it's just like ancient, like it's, it's in you and it's stuff, even if you did study, like it wouldn't make a difference. Like, of course you can study this stuff, but there's something else that's deep within you that's, that's coming out um that you don't need to go to school for it's it's just you it's you yes. why you're on earth <laughs> you said ancient and i really feel that that's the feeling that i that i feel around people that i just met but don't know but i know and i felt that with you i'm like we've yeah. talked been friends or <laughs> each other from a egypt or something oh for sure you right? were you were running this end of egypt i was on the other and we were yeah we've met before obviously totally <laughs> totally and you probably were making this wine back then sure. there you know there's a great book out now the immortality key that um speaks to this way of winemaking and using plants and botanicals that um, yeah, it's there's now evidence, archaeological physical ed evidence that especially psychedelics and wine are the basis for religion, um, okay. and it's it's very much a way for humans since we began to connect to where we come from and where we go after this. Totally. Well, didn't Jesus turn water w water into wine? Like, yeah. Come yeah. on. There's a lot. There's a lot. So much symbolism. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot, and it's 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 just. As I said, I'm just having fun. This is a lot of fun to just continue to learn about being human. Like, what this is so crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I love your perspective on life in general, that you see it as a, I see it as like a, a little simulation, a matrix where we chose these avatars and we like pick our challenges. We pick certain things. Some things I think are faded for sure, but yeah. I just love your outlook on life. You, you very much seem like the person, even when you are dealing with challenges that they're meant for you and not against you. And that's a very rare quality to have. So I just have to like, give you some shout outs about that. Thank you. And some days it is hard. And I'm like, I just lay on the floor. Right. And I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> and then the next day I'm like, oh, that's why that happened. Um, but also, as I said, dreams very much make me realize that this, there's something else to this place. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, I pretty much lived my life in pure wonder that I'm on earth and I'm so grateful. <laughs> that's beautiful. So what is next for you? Where do you see yourself? Where, like any other projects you have going on? Great question. So I still have a day job in order to afford building my company. Um, <laughs> right, but, I forgot that. Yeah, but I'm going to continue to build Kale. Um, I'm hoping to raise some money next year. Um, and the whole mission and purpose of it, you know, as well as giving an alcohol alternative um, that traditional and commercial wines are, you know, there's no labeling on there. You don't know what ingredients. And there's over, I think, 80 FDA approved additives to wine. Um, my mission here is to create clean wine um, that's low in alcohol and that you can wake up in the morning and everything's fine. Um, but also to introduce people to the field of herbalism. That's like, that's my true passion to make people realize that you can use plants and herbs, but you don't have to pop aspirin. There's a, you can have a tea that's made of this, um, that there's alternatives to, you know, fortify your health and wellness. Yeah. So make more wine. <laughs> well, 
But also if people connect to plants, yeah, on our earth, they would care about our earth more. Yeah. And we care about earth more. And it's just another pathway to, you know, trigger an awareness or an awakening in someone. Like some people, it was yoga that made them start asking mm-hmm. questions. As I said, like astrology can be one, Reiki can be one, but herbalism too is another pathway, as you said, to connect. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I love this mission. And I'm so grateful that you made a non, well, a low alcoholic wine because uh, I'm, I've been, I guess, I don't even know my relationship to alcohol now. It's been a very complicated road, but I haven't had alcohol in um, since 2019. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I want to continue on this path or not, but I just love that there is an alternative for me if I choose to take this path. So thank yes. you. Yeah, of course. Wine made of flowers. <laughs> Which makes me just feel so happy. Yeah. Like, like wine made of flowers, like who doesn't want to drink that? Yeah, it's just beautiful. I, I just love seeing and experimenting with the different botanicals to see how they taste. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wanted to share? Um, I don't think so. Not off the top of my head, but this was so much fun. I had such a great so fun. time sharing my story. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs>